Dying Light 2, Stay Human. The Global Relief Effort, or GRE, simply could not stop experimenting with a virus that led to the previous calamity of Dying Light. The Haran virus made its way into the world and caused the fall. Now what's left of humanity fights for scraps and fights off zombies trying to eat their face. Hey folks, I'm Baron J67 with Level 1 Gaming, and I am here to talk about my time with Dying Light 2, Stay Human. And first off, thanks to Techland and Stride PR for giving us a review code. Dying Light 2 takes place in 2036 after the collapse of society due to a virus escaping the GRE facilities. The virus turned people into zombies, or as they are referred to in the game, the infected. You take on the role of a pilgrim or a delivery man with a death wish named Aiden, who is looking for his long lost sister, Mia. The information you have gathered has led you to one of the last remaining cities called Villador. Of course, humanity doing what it does best has Villador divided into three factions. You have the survivors or free people who want to avoid going back to the way of life before the fall. Then you have the peacekeepers. They are aiming to establish order and security in Villador and potentially get things back to a sense of normalcy. Finally, you have the renegades, your run of the mill anarchist crazy people who take what they want with extreme violence. As Aiden, you will be a pivotal factor in how Villador will function. You will decide who gets access to utilities such as power and water. Also deeper in the main quest line, you will find yourself making more impactful decisions that affects the fate of everyone. The story of Dying Light 2 is not predictable and offers enough options for people to have different experiences. Now, when it comes to the audio, I have to be upfront here and say that I experienced some major sound issues while playing this game. I had the audio cut out during some key moments where decisions had to be made. Basically, I had to guess and hope the outcome was along the path that I was trying to follow with my playthrough as Aiden. These issues were not constant throughout my time playing, but they were there when it counted. Now, for a majority of the time playing, the sounds truly fit the environment. The sounds of humanity trying to function like normal overpowers the sounds of the infected during the day. While roaming around at night, you hear the cries of those not lucky enough to make it inside and the howls of the virals and infected who run the night. When it comes to the visuals of Dying Light 2 Stay Human, Villador is a terrifyingly beautiful place. Villador is full of color and detail along with its weapons and it's infected. Climbing up the taller buildings and looking over the city hides the infected hordes that are consistently trying to destroy you. One thing to note, though, is a lot of the NPCs outside of the main story characters will start looking familiar. It was not game breaking, but it was noticeable. I played the game in performance mode. There were two other options, quality and resolution mode. My goal was to see how the game would look with fast paced parkour and wild combat. And to be honest, I was not disappointed. The graphics held up even during intense combat and while parkouring through the world. The lighting in the game is well done, especially while watching your enemies getting engulfed in flames after you've tossed a Molotov cocktail at them. Also, while you're running for your life from a horde of virals, the way the UV lit areas shine like beacons of hope while hordes of virals are chasing you is an experience 
that really showcases how well done the lighting is in this game. Parkour and combat are the infected meat and potatoes of Dying Light 2 Stay Human. This game builds off of the first title by adding more ways to get around the map. The paraglider you see in the trailers takes a bit to get used to, but it's a lot of fun. The combinations of parkour, grapple hook, and the paraglider will create an entertaining way of traversing the city of Villador. Now on to the combat. Melee, 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 and bows, and then more melee. Most of your time fighting will be with either two-handed or one-handed weapons. I was caught up doing random events and side quests, so it took a while for me to unlock the bow. Once I got it, it made taking down ranged infected so much easier. There are two types of weapons. You have bladed and blunt weapons, and a pretty wide variety of arrows. Ones that cause fire damage, electrical damage, and even one that turns humans into infected. Just a heads up, your weapons will break often, so don't grow too attached to any one item. There are mods you can add to your weapons to give them special abilities, such as causing your enemy to catch on fire or even get tossed away like a force push. An important part of the gameplay, though, is the crafting system. Accessories such as healing items and throwing knives can be found throughout the world, but gathering crafting material and purchasing blueprints or even earning them as mission rewards is what I found myself doing often. There are plenty of resources available in the world, such as scrap and alcohol, to craft a large quantity of accessories and weapon mods. All you have to do to get them is fight through the infected and bandits. No big deal. Now it's time to talk about the new immunity meter mechanic. So without spoiling the story, if your immunity meter hits zero, you will die right there on the spot. No questions asked. There are a few ways to increase the immunity timer and that's through finding GRE inhibitors. These GRE inhibitors will be the only way to increase your health and stamina. It's not always going to be easy to find them, but they are found all over the map. The inhibitors also unlock the combat and parkour skills, which will increase your overall survivability while in Villador. Now back to the immunity meter. UV lights and the sun work as natural ways to keep your meter from running out. And then there are plenty of items that replenish your meter when it's low. Honestly, when I first seen this mechanic, I thought it was going to be a major headache to keep up with. But there are plenty of items and opportunities to increase it. I only died once from my immunity meter running out. In the end, if you enjoyed the first dying light, I believe you will have continued fun with Dying Light 2 Stay Human. This game does not require you to play the first one to understand what's going on, so people new to the series will be fine. The improved graphics and parkour make for a gritty, enjoyable, fun-filled experience. The audio issues I experienced popped up during important moments that messed up my time with Dying Light 2. I believe those issues will be patched out, but they still affected me. I experienced a few crashes and some par for the course open world clipping and ragdoll moments. But I overall did enjoy the game and look forward to playing the multiplayer component of it once it launches. I give Dying Light 2 Stay Human a 6.8 out of 10. I want to say thank you again to Techland and Stride PR for providing me with an Xbox Series X code. Make sure to get all your gaming news from LV1Gaming.com and make sure to hit that subscribe button for more Dying Light 2 content.